eigenvalue decomposition. If you think back to our discussion of the LU decomposition, we made the claim that every fundamental algorithm in linear algebra has a matrix decomposition associated with it, where some matrix that's central to the problem is represented as a product of two or more matrices. So what the LU decomposition is to Gaussian elimination, the eigenvalue decomposition is to the eigenvalue algorithm, and the entire study of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And it has enormous practical and conceptual applications. And it's breathtakingly beautiful too. But going back to practical applications, how's this for an example? Every time you do a Google search, Google computes a singular value decomposition problem. And the singular value decomposition, which we will study towards the end of the course, can be considered either a special case of the eigenvalue decomposition or a generalization of the eigenvalue decomposition. But in any case, it's very closely related to the eigenvalue decomposition. And Google doesn't just do it for three by three matrices like we have here or 10 by 10, more like three million by three million matrices or even larger. And it does it very fast, very well, and with spectacular success. And it's probably even true that we now solve more eigenvalue decomposition problems in a day than all of the other decompositions in linear algebra combined in all of the history of science. I wonder if that's true. It probably is, thanks to Google. So let me show you what the eigenvalue decomposition is. So suppose we have a matrix, and I chose a matrix for which we can easily determine all of the eigenvalues and all but one of the eigenvectors. Not that it's important for this discussion. So here they are. All of the rows add up to seven, so one of them is seven, and the corresponding eigenvalue is one, one, one. All right. Another one, of course, is four, because it's alone in its column, and it's on the diagonal. So the corresponding eigenvector is zero, zero, one. And then from the trace, you can easily determine that the remaining eigenvalue is three. And I had to do Gaussian elimination to determine this eigenvector. So now we have the full collection of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And first, we'll only talk about eigenvalue decompositions for matrices that do have a full set of eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors, as many linearly independent eigenvectors as the dimension of the matrix. All right, so what are we going to do with these eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Well, let's first capture the statement that these are indeed eigenvalues and eigenvectors algebraically. And that means that A times this matrix equals seven times the matrix or vector, but we're going towards thinking of vectors as matrices, but let's say vector for now. A times this vector is four times the input vector. And finally, A times this vector is three times that vector. That's the algebraic expression for the statement that these are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we captured those properties in three mixed matrix vector equations. Let's call these vector equations. And let's set it as our goal to convert these three vector equations into a single matrix equation. Matrices are good at very many things, but one of them is compacting and organizing the information as succinctly as possible. So why capture something with three different equations when we can capture it with a single matrix equation? So you should pause the video and address this challenge. And that is to convert these three separate vector equations into a single matrix equation. And how would you do it? Well, you would have to somehow combine these three vectors into a matrix and these three vectors into a matrix and maybe the eigenvalues themselves into a matrix too. And come up with a single matrix equation where if you interpret it from the column perspective, you will get these three equations in your interpretation. So pause the video, try to do it on your own. Meanwhile, I'll do it on the board right here. And when I write A, of course, I mean this matrix. I just didn't want to repeat this matrix several times. So continue to use A whenever you mean this matrix. So here's what it'll be.
All right, so here we have it. What I did was organize the eigenvectors into a matrix. So what we have here, if I were to interpret this matrix from the column's point of view, is one is A times the first column, and then A times the second column, and then A times the third column, reassembled into a matrix. And what do we get when we multiply A by the first column? Well, we get seven times the first column. So because we're multiplying columns, I had to put what ended up being an elementary matrix on the right. If I put it on the left, it would do something to the rows. So I had to put it on the right. And the interpretation of this elementary matrix coming from the right is that it multiplies the first column by seven, the second column by four, and the last column by three. And that's exactly what we want. We know that the result of A times the first column is seven times the first column. So seven times the first column. And A times the second column is four times the second column. And finally, A times the third column is three times the third column. So indeed, this one matrix identity does capture these three vector identities in a single equation. And what's very nice is that this matrix that consists of the eigenvectors as its columns appears twice, once on the left and once on the right. Of course, we can't cancel it because it's once on the right, excuse me, because on the left-hand side it appears on the right of the product and on the right-hand side it appears on the left of the product. So even if you try to multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of this matrix, you won't be able to get them to meet on both sides. If you multiply by the inverse of this matrix on the left, it'll cancel this one but not this one. And if you do it on the right, it'll cancel this one by not this one. So it's one of those wonderful things having to do with non-commutativity of the matrix product. And this challenge was actually a very good exercise in matrix multiplication. And it's great, great that you had that practice. So now let's give these matrices some names and see what we have. And we'll actually will be multiplying both sides by the inverse of this matrix. So let's call it X, capital X. And then capital X appears on the right-hand side as well. And here's capital X again. And this matrix is full of little lambdas. So it gets the name capital lambda, capital Greek letter lambda, which is typically written like this, or maybe without these little footstools. All right, so let's now write algebraically what we have. What we have algebraically is A x equals x lambda. All right, so we now have this identity and we're after a decomposition for A. We want A to be a product of other matrices. Why do we want that? Well, we're looking for a decomposition of the matrix A and then in subsequent videos, of course, you'll see the fantastic utility of this way of thinking. And so multiplying both sides on the right by X inverse, we have that A equals X lambda X inverse. Okay, and there is now a lot to say about this decomposition. So one thing I'd like to point out is something that we've discussed before, is that of course X does not cancel X inverse because they're not touching. If you wanted them to touch, you would have to switch the order of these two matrices or these two matrices. And of course that would change the result. It's an invalid operation in linear algebra. This matrix is right now multiplying the columns of X, but if you were to switch them, it would scale the rows of X, totally different things. So you cannot switch matrices. So these matrices do not cancel. And we have seen this before, of course. This is a similarity transformation of the matrix lambda. In fact, we have constructed these sorts of things several times before, and we have now arrived at the same sort of thing from a completely different angle. But we will now be able to answer some of the questions that we were not able to answer before. 
And I think I will save that discussion for in another video where this eigenvalue decomposition will be our starting point. And there is a whole lot to say about this decomposition.